All right, God bless you guys for joining me at HNLC Studio. For those of you actually coming in to the show at this particular time, we're going to do shows at this time. We're going to actually be running our actually Spreaker program as well as our Podbean program. We're running in Zoom. Also, we're running here in our actually uh, uh, YouTube station. So we're going to actually be running duels uh, for those who are just coming in. For those who want to join the Spreaker show, can do so. You want to go to Spreaker.com. If you go to Spreaker.com, you want to go to its platform. You want to put in Harvest New Life Church. If you put in Harvest New Life Church, you want to go to the uh, categories that I have there. You want to type in uh, uh, Harvest. Well, don't want to be redundant. Harvest New Life Church. If you type that information in, there's going to be a plethora of shows that I have on that particular program. And as you go into that program, you're going to choose the one that's on the left. That's going to be the picture of my wife in the picture. She's going to be on the right. And I'm going to be on that particular uh, left and my baby daughter is at the bottom. You hit that, it's going to say live. It's going to bring you right into the program. Now, so, you know, for now, for those of you who are coming into the YouTube channel, you want to go to actually YouTube. You want to go to HNLC International. And if you go to HNLC International, you're going to see the information saying live. You're going to see my shows and say live. And that's going to get you right into the broadcast as of right now. Uh, Spreaker is actually loading up his pre programmed uh, service. In other words, it's got a little melody it plays before the service actually comes in. You can kind of hear my voice. Don't want to sound too loud over it. I'm going to kind of bring it down a little bit for those who are actually on the Spreaker station. But we're going to let that play out. And the play out, we're going to open up in prayer. We're going to hear what the Word of God is going to be speaking here at HNLC as I get myself in position here. Um, uh, let's look at the book of chapter, uh, Psalm chapter 5. And as we go into this book, uh, Psalm chapter 5, we're going to hear some cries that's coming from David. And um, you guys, give me a few minutes. We're going to get ourselves in position. And we're going to hear just what the word of God is coming. That is coming from the kingdom. Most of you, as I see, you got Androids, iPads, iPhones. All of those things that pick us up. They don't care where you are in the United States. I don't care if you have access to um, Instagram. Whatever you, whatever you read it. Wherever you guys are on, you can pick us up. All you have to do is go to our actual show. If you're, not, if you're coming up to the Spreaker show... You can catch it under the Spreaker Show, going to actually its platform, which is Spreaker.com. If you go to Spreaker.com, you want to go, to, I said before, don't want to sound redundant. You want to go to its platform, type in Harvest New Life Church. It's going to bring you a plethora of shows that I have in there. You want to click the one, the first one, it's going to be a picture of me, my wife, my daughter. Hit that, and it's going to say live. For those who come into the YouTube channel, you just want to go to HNLC International. And that's going to bring you right to the show. You should see everything going live that'll put you right here. Now, Pod Bean people, those who are in the Pod Bean show, you should get an automatic uh, uh, pin action telling you that the show is now going live. And you should get right in there also. Even the ones who's coming to the iCloud station, you should catch all that. It's coming up here right now. But let's get ourselves in a position. We're going to take a little picky boo right here. We'll make sure we can play that out. And we just want to go and open up in prayer. Let's get ourselves in position here with the Word of God. It's coming from the kingdom on this particular afternoon. What well, is morning? We're still morning. Uh, Father God, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you for this opportunity. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, we declare the Word. We decree it. We speak it according to your will, your purpose, and your power. We know, Father God, when you come forth and bring down what you have given us, Father God, we ask you, Father God, to give us the very instruction that we need as we go forth, as we continue to do what God has called us to do. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray, Lord. Amen. Give me a few minutes, man. I'm going to step up out of my chair here just a second. Going to release my headphones here a minute. Got to just kind of do something small here. Going to make sure I get my um, my own air sign on. So give me a second. All right, we got that all secure. Let's get ourselves back in position. Here with the word of God is speaking here. Don't want to have the headphones on, but got to use them because I got to pick up this particular speaker program that's going on in the back of us. Most of you see the rating and that particular level that's coming up and down. That's what you're gonna. That's what you're gonna hear. That's coming out through your ears, and I can hear that as well as I'm speaking to you right here at HNLC. Well, let's look at the book of Psalms, chapter five, and got your coffee, whatever you're gonna have this morning. I got my little coffee here. Kind of wet my tonsils a little bit. Don't want to be choking in the middle of the word. Of course, you know you're going to have to have your pen. You want to make sure you get your, your all your notes or whatever, your iPads, whatever you take notes on your notepads. Let's just hear what the word of God saying. Let's get into this and let's see what's going on here with David. And the word of God declares and decree a prayer of protection. You know, we're thinking about the prayer of protection. You take your Bibles, you go to the book of uh, Matthew. And we're going to stay in Psalms chapter 5. Don't leave out of Psalms chapter 5, but just kind of take your Bibles, whatever your markers you have. You're going to hear pages turning. Don't worry about that. Yeah, don't worry about that. Just, yeah, just, just, just 
stay in tune, stay, stay focused, stay focused. You're going to hear that because this stuff is right by this mic, and these are dynamic mics, and I'm telling you, they'll pick up a bug if it flies by. And that's just the way these mics are. It's not nothing that's, it, you know, people say unprofessional. Eh, don't, don't listen to all that stuff. You, you do what God has called you to do, and you do it the way that God is telling you to do it. If they hear the word, then they're going to worry about all the irrelevancy. They're going to hear what the word of God has to say in this particular scripture as we go forth. I think a Psalm chapter, uh, Matthew chapter 12. And this is the very thing I teach my young daughter. I told her about this particular chapter. I said, you know, you got to learn how to read the model prayer of the Lord. You know, you're going to have to know that. And um, let's kind of look at this right here. Um. Catch some calls going to be coming in. Got to push some stuff out the way here because I don't want to be interrupted on the course of time of this service that we've got going on. So I know I get a lot of calls that come in. So they, they know I'm on the air, but, you know. But in and on, let's look at this right here. And um, Let's go to chapter 12. What well, we in, 12? Yeah, we're in 12. Well, that's where we are. It's 12, 6. Go look at something here. Let me just... Check out. I'm gonna check out something else here as we go forth here. I wanna, um, you know, you know, in in the book of Psalms. Let's go to Matthew chapter six first. Let's look at Matthew chapter six first because I'm. This is, uh, this is something that now we're not gonna forsake um, Psalms five because we want to hear, you know, when you're actually coming to Christ, it, it's a way that you come to Him. You know, it, it's amazing when you talk about it. And you think about it, you know, Dr. J.C. Matthews said it like this. You know, he talks about how you need to learn how to talk to God. Well, the disciples said also, Lord, look here. During the course of time, Christ was actually um, going through the process of of um, being baptized at the, at the Jordan River. We saw that that was taking place. And then we saw the process where the disciples came back to Jesus over there in the book of Luke, I believe it's chapter 11. And they said, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray. And Jesus said, when you pray. And this is the same thing as we as men and women of God are to teach our children because we're discipling them. Now, they are they are children, but we're discipling them with the commandments of God to teach them the ways of God. So when the world comes at them, as it says in the book of Isaiah, when the enemy come in like a flood, we're going to declare the scriptures and know and understand according to what Luke 10 and 19. OK, you know, no weapon, you know, in the midst of all those things, you know. For above all principalities and powers, you know, all that we have, you know, put on the whole arm of God. We want to know that they're really understanding what we're teaching them, that when the wiles of the devil come at them, when the enemy comes at them like a flood, we want to put a standard inside of them. One of the first things we teach our children is how to do the model prayer. And the word of God says over here, and let's look here closely. And uh, the word of God says, when you pray, you should be as, not as the hypocrites are. Now, this is in the, the book of um Matthew chapter uh, 6, and we're going to look at this particular uh, fifth verse. He said, when you pray, be not as the hypocrites are, that when they pray standing in the synagogues, that they may come to the streets, that they may be heard. You know, they don't want to be rewarded. He said, but when you pray and you enter into your closet and you shut the door and you pray to your father, which is in secret, that your father, which sees you in secret, shall reveal to you openly. Now, this is a revelation here. When you get along with Christ, everything that happened to all the disciples, all the men and women of God, you, me, whoever. When we get to that private place with Christ, and we begin to pray. We get all the things around us to take away our focus, and we begin to focus on the Word of God. God begins to reveal things, but but but, but the prayers we got to pray, it's got to be fervent prayers. Fervent prayers that will avail against, and we got to be righteous. When we come before God, we got to be righteous. Now, listen to what I'm saying before we be righteous. That we got to be righteous. When you enter into prayer, the first thing you want to do, you want to throw your hands up. Lord, I'm a sinner. Period. I have sinned and I have come short of your glory. And Father God, even as I enter into your secret place, I want you to forgive me because I'm coming to the presence of the holies of holy. Most of us know the process with the priest during the course of the time. They were sacrificing bulls and goats and they had to bring these particular sacrifices every year. They had to go in the holders of holies and send the priest in. If it wasn't right, then they put that rope on him. They had to pull that brother back out of there. You know, he was a corpse. Because you as a man or woman of God got the ability now to come before Christ. And if there's anything you may have done that wasn't right in the eyesight of God, you got the ability to have the mercy and grace and ask for forgiveness before you enter into his presence. When you come to the presence of God, the word of God declares it here once again. We'll look over here in the area of uh, Matthew. Look at this real close, Matthew chapter 6. And look at the 6th verse. 
He said, when you pray, enter into your closet. That means your private place. And when you have shut the door, I mean, you got privacy around you. Your father, which are in heaven, which sees you in secret, should reward you openly. Notice what he's saying. I'm in a secret place with Christ. He's going to hear what I have to say because everything now that's coming out of me is fervency. I've laid down before God, asked him to forgive me for my sins, that now he may know that I'm coming to him with sincerity. And I'm coming to him with confidence, believing and declaring the decree that he's going to do what he said he's going to do. The word of God tells us in the book of uh, Numbers 23, 19 to 21, am I a God that I should lie? Or am I a son of a man that I should have to repent? So when you go into your closet, you don't depend on what the flesh says. You depend on what the Holy Spirit has given you to enter into his presence. It's amazing, guys, when we think about some of the um when we think about some of the things we go through in life and uh how it's we're asking for God for a healing. You know, when we enter into God's presence, we enter into the presence of the Holy Spirit. God said he will reveal things to us, notice what he said, openly. If I'm going through a chronic illness, if your family member's going through a certain problem, something that happened in the family. So God said, I'm going to give you the answer on how you can console your, your, that, that individual or how you can come out of this particular proclivity of injury that you may heard something from the hymnologist about your injuries that wasn't right. And Christ said, there's a healing that I have in store for you. With that healing, all depends how you approach the throne of grace. Because God said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly. Why? Because I sent for my, I sent for my son to down the cross for the remission of all sins. Doesn't matter. Sickness, whatever. He, he went to the cross for all of that. He paid the ultimate price. He paid the master visa. Beyond the master visa, he paid the ultimate price for me and you. Then we may come into his presence in our sinful ways with our flesh and open up an opportunity to hear, hear our prayers. Let's look at this once again. But when you pray, enter into the closet, and when you have shut the door, pray to your father, which is in secret. Your father, which sees in secret, look what he sees. He sees in secret. No man can see the very visions that God has in store for you. Let's think about something the Word of God talks about over in the book of 1 Corinthians, uh, second chapter, over in that particular um, ninth verse. For it has been already written, that eyes have not seen. Now you're talking about from a humanistical point of view. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered the heart of any man. The things, look at the things, the things is only God has in store for you in secret. The only way you can receive it is coming to the presence of God. It can't come from outside. It can't come from anybody else. Because now God is looking at your prayer and the way you're praying and how you use your language to come to him in the presence of a certain situation or circumstance that you're in. Any kind of orange cone, any kind of stop sign, any kind of ditch, any kind of proclivity, any kind of problem. You have had the ability to access the kingdom of God with your mouth. That's what the word of God says, life and death. Come on, somebody. You can speak the very things in the presence of God, and he'll hear you with the fervency that comes out of you. Righteous prayers of a righteous man avails much. That's the blessings that God has in store for you. That's if you walk upright. Now, you talk about Psalms 8411. Psalms 8411 says, no good thing, listen to me, no good thing, but God will hold from you, that's if you walk upright. If you look at the entire scripture, you talk about how he says God is the sun and the shield, and no good thing will he withhold from those who walk upright. That means I'm in the position of Matthew 6 and 33, seeking he first the kingdom. In the presence of my situation, I go into my private place, where it says back here in the book of Matthew 6 and 6, I begin to ask God, what is it that I may need to come out of this particular dilemma, situation, or circumstances I may, I may be in? Because the word of God says, lean not to your own. That's what he said in the Proverbs. Lean not to your own, but acknowledge. You got to acknowledge God in all his way, and he will direct your path. Let me show you something here. Let's stay over here in, the, in 6. Now, we're not going to forget about uh, uh, Psalm chapter 5. Let's mark 6. Take your, take your pens and your, your pencils. Mark chapter 6, and I want you to look at this part, this part where it says, He sees in secret and rewards you openly. Some of you might look from the King James Version. Some of you might be from an international, but it's all going to read the same. Because I'm going to show you something else, a little nugget here. Then when we think about the process, when we go to the book of Ephesians, look how Christ looks at you. Before we go into the book of Ephesians, remember what it says over in the book of, uh, um, what is it, the book of uh, 
Psalms 84, 11. There's nothing he would hold from you. That's if you walk upright. Now, when the Romans tells us, according to Romans chapter 13, you look down to 13, down to 16th verse, he talks about how we heirs and joint heirs. That means we have the ability to be just like him. The Bible says, count it not robbery to be just like God. The Bible said, I'm rocking for the suffering at the present time. I think that's um, I think that's uh, Romans 8 and 18. At this present time, not be cared for, won't be declared of the glory that will be revealed. We go back to the book and we look over here in the area of, um, as we just came off here, was in um, was Romans. Uh, was I think it was Romans. Yeah. Romans says, he says that if you walk in the, if you walk in the flesh, you're going to deal with things of the flesh. But if you walk in the spirit, now that's Galatians, but Romans pretty much says the same thing. Let's look at this right here. I want to get this thing cross-fired here because I want to make sure we're talking about how we come into the presence of God, first of all, and the things that God has given us, even as we walk as men and women of God. It's all given to us. Let's look over here in Ephesians. Now, let's look at Ephesians. Now, we, we're coming off of Matthew uh, chapter 6 in the 6th verse, but we want to look at the book of Ephesians. Let's look up Ephesians 17. Let's look at 16. Cease not to give thanks. And this is Paul's words to the people of emphasis. He's speaking to them. And how the presence of God is giving you everything that you need according to the kingdom of God. I give you everything. Everything I give you everything, everything you need. Everything is right here according to in your mouth. If you speak to Christ, believe and declare and decree. Mark 9 and 23. They, look here. Uh, Psalm 84, 11. I ain't holding nothing from you. All you got to do is walk right. When your ways pleases God, he gives you desires. I want you to really understand that. He gives you desires of your heart. The Bible says when a man ways pleases God, he gives them the desires of their heart. Look at some of the desires that happen when Paul comes to the people of Ephesians, of the emphasis in Ephesians. And he begins to talk to them about how he worshiped them, the prayers. He said, well, if I, after I've heard of your prayers in faith in Jesus Christ, to all the saints, in the 16th verse, cease not to give thanks unto you to mention you in my prayers, that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give unto you spiritual wisdom, look at these particular words, spiritual wisdom, revelation, knowledge in him. This is powerful. Knowledge of Christ, which was revealed through the Spirit when we enter into his chambers. This is what we said over in the book of Psalms, uh, uh, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6 said that very word. When you enter into the secret place with Christ, Christ will begin to reveal the things that he already has in you. When you begin to unlock the tumblers and you get in the presence of God, God will begin to pull things out of you that you've never known, heard, or seen before. That's why he says in the book of Corinthians, your eyes haven't seen, the ears haven't heard. Neither has it entered in the heart of any man the things that God has in store for those who love him. Why is that? Because there's an inner chamber that's already in you. Greater than he that's in you. Listen to me. You got a big old Jesus living on the inside of you. If you don't know how to unlock him and bring him out, then woe unto you. Now, my suggestion is you look at Matthew 6 and 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And then all of these things that he prepared for you will be added unto you. Let's finish in the book of Ephesians before going back to the book of um, uh, Matthew. He says over here in the 17th verse, The God of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you spiritual wisdom and revelation and knowledge, the eyes of understanding being enlightened, that you may know the hope of a calling, the riches of the glory, the inheritance of the saints. That's, that's all available to you. That's all yours. Everything you have is available. It's all given to you, according to the kingdom of God. That's if I walk upright. Every riches that God has in store for me, remember the word of God say, I came that you may have what? Life and have it more abundantly. When I'm having life and having more abundantly, I got rules and regulations that I must abide by from the kingdom of God if I'm going to get all the things that the kingdom has in store for me. So I come back over here and I look at the word of Matthew chapter 6 once again. I got to go into the secret place according to the book of Matthew 6 and 6. When I go into my secret place, into my closet, when I shut my door, I begin to pray. What am I praying? What am I praying? Whatever the desires of your heart, whatever's burdened you, cast all your cares on him. Because he is the only one that's going to care for you. I'm telling you, man, the woman of God, when you begin to come before God and you begin to sacrifice yourself as a living sacrifice, listen to me. I mean, letting it all go. Sometimes you might be in a position, your mortgage might be ready to go down. 
You, you, you might have a person in the you see them most of that. You might have somebody in the hospital that's going through a change in their life. You don't quite know how to enter in. That's when the word of God says in Proverbs 3 and 5, don't lean to what you think. Don't look at tradition. God said, I got a whole new revelation for you that's more different than what man has told you. They can read all the books they want. They can have all the nice persuasive words they want. But the Bible said, I will give you something that man never known, heard, or seen before when you come into my presence. That's when you enter into the chambers of Christ. You enter into the holies of holy. That means there's things in the holy of holy that no man has written. No man has spoken. No man has seen. It only divinely given to you as being a man, a woman of God in the position when you come into the presence of God. But you got to come in there with the attitude to know that you want to receive from him. That means when I come into the presence of God, I got to be able to get out of my knees, admit that I am a sinner. Doesn't matter how many times you went to church or how long you've been a Christian, that ain't got nothing to do with it. It got something to do with it. Yeah, it's a good track record. But when you come before God, it's a newness all over again. See, I can't come into God with the old prayers I had. I got to come with a fresh prayer. If you want a fresh anointing, if you want a fresh word, you got to come with freshness before God. That means I got to lay myself down and ask God to forgive me for whatever I may have done in my life that discredit you as being me being your, me, you being my father. I want you to help me and show me the direction in which I go in. So we understand the word of God in this particular area as I lay down this particular um a platform or this particular foundation getting you to understand how important it is when you come into the prayer then when you come into prayer you got to unlock tumblers to the kingdom of god it's not about your persuasive words it's not about you period it's a dialogue in the spirit between you and christ it's a one-on-one -on -one. that's why the word of god says seek ye first the kingdom of god look here not anybody else or what they said look understand what god has in store for you you and you only Seek you first the kingdom of God, all of his righteousness. If there's anything I may have broken that wasn't right in the eyesight of God, Lord, look, I'm quick to throw my, Lord, forgive me, because I have sinned. I wish the desire that you answer my prayers. So I come to Christ with such a way that he's going to hear my prayers. I think it's, uh, if you think about it, you think of Psalms, um, if we turn our Bibles over to the book of, um, not looking at, getting out of Psalms chapter 5, but, I believe it's in um, Psalms chapter 6. No, 46, I'm sorry. The Bible says like this, God is a refuge and strength, a very present help, in a very present time. Listen to what he says. Look how this goes. God is a refuge. Look at a refuge. It means whenever I'm in a situation, God is the one that's going to pull me out. He's a refuge. Not only he's a refuge, he's got strength. In the midst of whatever I'm dealing with. He can save me. And there's nothing too hard for him to do. He's a refuge in the strength. In a very present trouble. That means God is a very present help. In a very present time of need. Notice the word where he said present. Your prayers don't have to be delayed. It don't have to have a delayed answer. It's according to your faith. How you believe. The Bible declared that. Elijah was just a normal man like me and you. Pray for rain. And God brought forth the rain. He was just a normal person like me and you. And he talked to God that it be no rain, no do no season for this time of the season. There'd be no rain. And they say the man of God, they, they say, they say the, uh, uh, Ahab got mad at the brother, look for the brother, trying to kill the brother. You know what I'm saying? You know, so we understand now that Elijah was a regular man like me and you, and he was called to be one of the most powerful men in the Bible. Then what about me and you? My prayers are just as great. But how do I enter into his presence? I got to enter his presence with praise, grace, humility, and humbleness. You come in there think you know it all. You think you got your little stuff down. It sounds good and looks good. You praying that sounds good. The people, the ears that hear. Let's go back to the Matthew. Let's go back to Matthew. I want to make sure we get this, we get this in our system in the book of Matthew. Let's go back to Matthew. Amen. Go to Matthew 6. Notice what it says in Matthew chapter 6. Did we mark that? I didn't, but I look, I go back and look for it. Matthew chapter 6. Let's look what it says in Matthew chapter 6. He says over in the first verse, over in the fifth verse, when we talk about the instructions of teaching the prayer. When you pray, you should not be as the hypocrite. For they love the sounding or the standing in the synagogues. In the, look here. And on the corners and of the streets. And they may be seen by men. They got words that sound persuasive and good. 
to people ears. Oh, that's a powerful prayer. But how do you know? According to John 4, 24, the word of God tell me spirits recognize spirits. We'll go back to John, 1 John chapter 4. I mean, yeah, John chapter 4. Beloved, believe not what? Every spirit. But try the spirits with an S to see what type they may be. Because there's many false prophets S has gone out into what? The world today. So it doesn't matter how good the prayer sound is it communicating with the Holy Ghost. I can have all the words that sound good. It's like Apollo and Paul over in the book of 1 Corinthians. You know, who is Paul and who's Apollo? They give you anything. They're just mere ministers. That's all we are. It doesn't matter how many rings and robes and titles and bills I have. It's my prayers getting through the kingdom of God. Jesus didn't have a building. We talk about this all the time. He didn't have a building, nor did he have any kind of place to lay his head. That's why the word of God says, birds have nests, uh, foxes have holes, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. The anointing, as I heard Dr. Von Peek say, Dr. Von Peek says like this. Remember, Good News International, 1919 College Street, Arlington, Texas. Get out there. For those who mothers in that area don't have a place to go to Mother's Day service tomorrow, you know you want you might want to go out there tonight, you know tomorrow. But also I want to um, just do me a little commercial break right there. Talk about Pastor Sam Fitzroy uh, is going to have his um, his birthday party on today, and I'm going to be enjoying him and Gloria Fitzroy at my Mount Church of Plano, and they're going to be having a um, their services on this evening at six o'clock. For those who want more information about their service, and I don't know if you can get in. I think it's probably capped out. If you didn't get your tickets already, but we want to honor him and uh, Gloria Fitzroy uh, on that on his birthday as we celebrate that today. Let's go back into the word. Hear what the word of God is saying here. He talks about the process of how me and you just regular men. We got the ability to reach him like anybody else. It's not based on our education, not based on our you know degrees, it's not based on any of that. It's the heart. And when my heart is right with Christ. Then he hears me. When my ways pleases Christ, then he gives me the desires of my heart. Nothing he would hold for me. Psalm chapter 5, I know we've been kind of delaying it for a while. I got iPads and all that stuff, cell phones, but I don't like it. You know, I, I work them because I know sometimes when I tell people in church, and some people like they say that's the way it is. No, it's not the way it is. You train the people you want them to be trained. Don't bring cell phones in the church, bring your Bible. You can have a cell phone for emergency purposes, but that's a distraction. Too many things going on in the cell phone. I mean, I do PowerPoint teaching, and I like PowerPoint teaching sometimes, but in my process of PowerPoint teaching, it, it, the, the people don't bring their Bible. And when they don't bring their Bible, then they look, they depend on the screen, which is in the services. There's nothing wrong with PowerPoint teaching, but we got to bring them to mind and say, hey, look, hold up your Bible. Say, this is my Bible. This is the word of God. It'll do just what it said it's going to do. You got to believe that. I mean, I mean, you can hold your cell phones up if you want to. All I'm saying is that whenever you hear the word of God, you want to, is the word of God says over in Matthew, you got to get in the secret place. That means you got to get away from all distractions. When I go in the secret place for Christ, I begin to pray. Ain't no cell phones coming there. When I'm trying to hear from God, ain't no, ain't no cell phones coming up in there. When I come out, then whatever answer it is, whatever's on that thing, then I get it. That's why you see me up here. I turn this thing off. I got it up here. I turn this thing off. Now, when I got up here, it's just for notes. It's just a note. It's just a notary I have. Use for notes. Anytime I see um, messages come through on here, it just lets me know that somebody said, "Hey, thumbs up. Hey, doing good job, Pastor." Hey, hey, God, amen. God bless you. God bless you. But I want to. I don't want to be distracted when I'm bringing the word to you, as it says over here in the book of Matthew chapter six. And Matthew chapter six made it very, uh, made it very clear that you know it's distractions. You know, there's distractions gonna come, but. Um, over here in the book of um, Psalms, over in the book of Psalms, um, Psalm chapter 5, David is given an uh, actual prayer for protection. He talks about, he said, give ear to me, word, oh, he said, give to me, word, give to me my ear, give your ear to me, my word, and consider my meditation. Give me, look, Lord, I'm, I'm Matthew chapter 6, the same thing. David says once again, give ear to my words. Don't let's fly through it. Give ear to my words. Every word that proceeds out of my mouth has got to be a fervent word that's going to come to the kingdom of God. If it's going to unlock that what I need to have to get to him, to reveal to him there's something going on and I need your protection, I need your help. When you call on the father, you ask your mother for something, mom, I want a cookie. She might say, okay, 
You can't have the cookie right now, but I can give it to you later. I mean, God's never, it's, it's, it's yeas and amens, but, you know, but God is yeas and nays, but, you know, I believe it's yeas and amens, you know. In other words, he knows when you need it because he knows the plans that he has for you. He knows the thoughts that he has for you. That's good and not of evil. So if I ask my mother for something, it's not that she won't give it to me. There are some things I must do in order to get that, what I asked for. I mean, she told me to do like eat all your dinner first or finish up in the yard or break, you know, do this before you get that. She never tells me no, but she said, let me know. There's things you have to do to receive from Christ. And that's the same thing with you and I as being man and woman of God. There are certain things we must do. We need to pray daily. We need to read our Bible. We need to walk upright. If we're going to receive the blessing for God, as I said in one of my small recordings, the blessings of the Lord it make it rich, and it added no toil. Why does it add any toil? When I walk upright, go back to Psalms 84, 11. There's nothing God will hold for me that's if I walk upright. My mother will not withhold anything for me if I do everything commanded, what she told me to do. Thank God for it, she's in the kingdom of God. But I remember the things that she put in my heart. If I do right by the one who have leadership over me, who have authority over me, then I'll get what I need in my hands. Some people complain about the process when they go to take over new churches. They got to deal with all these so-called mean deacons and all these different things. Okay, find the one who you can deal with. Get with him. Find the one who got some sense, you know. Because a lot of times you go to these new places, I mean, uh, I have had plenty of times when I went into uh, different ministries asked me, hey, we need you to come help us at the church. Okay, yeah, I'll come help you out, but I'm not going to stay. I'm going to help your administration, right, get some programs in place, but I got something else I got to go do. Because I know once I get in there, it can be chaotic. And I'm not saying it is with everybody. Sometimes you can get along to work with everybody. But, you know, anyway, that's, that's an old another subject right there. But the Word of God says, give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Look here. Consider my meditation. Meditation, Joshua 1 and 8. Meditate on the Word of God day and night. We see all what happened with Joshua. From time he went over to the for the matter of fact, from the time he got to the Jordan, the power, how the river stopped and the stones was laid, and they going over there, they go into Jericho, they shut that thing down, they get over there to AI, they start fighting and battling over there, they get favored in the process, not the first time because they went up there and then prayed like they're supposed to. Now that's the whole other story there for those who joined me on my actually uh, Jericho run story uh, that I was dealing with that particular series. We know what happened. He got the AI, he got kind of Einstein, Joshua got kind of boasters but he i don't know but he, he sent those men up to ai and they'll, they beat them brothers down when joshua fell to his face y'all know the story and joe said get up off your face and there's people who want that sometimes when you have things in your life that god really wants you to get from embrace from around your life you can't go forward until you get rid of that sometimes it don't be like your blessing's been hindered okay well examine yourself you ain't got too much to examine everybody else examine yourself and sometimes, and don't get me wrong when I say this, sometimes when God uses people to help you, it's not negative. When he used people to get you to a certain level, listen to me, you're not stepping on to me, I heard him. It's like going to class in the first grade, the second grade, certain teachers he used them, you know, to elevate you to life, first, second, third, fourth, fifth. You know, you don't forget about them, but sometimes you keep people in your life too long. And sometimes you're just passing through. And sometimes, in, in most of us, we get upset if somebody done us wrong. No, anybody done you wrong? You know, you gave me some structure to move to the next level. I mean, all the people in my life, Bishop Raymond Johnson, uh, Sam Finch Roy, I still talk with those guys, um, uh, Pastor Von Peaks, you know, uh, great guys, you know. they All these great guys that gave me great information. It's not that I neglected them. They gave me good information on the way I made good friends. I can still go back and talk to them. But you can't stay stuck in one place. Is that that's your answer. You know, you got to keep moving. You got to go to higher heights. As you're going to higher heights, hope you learn something. As you're going up, you, you'll gain some friends as you're going up. And that's just the way that is. David says, once again, I got to get out of here. In the book of Psalms, uh, chapter 5, he said, Give ear to my words, O Lord, and consider my meditation. Joshua 1 and 8. Hearken unto my voice and cry, My King, my God, for unto you I pray. Listen to what he says in that first verse 2 of chapter 5. Hearken unto my voice, every word that proceeded out of the mouth. It goes forth. Of my cry, I'm crying out to you. My king, he's, a, he's giving them, he's, look, he's, he's announcing and doing the right thing to get in the presence of God. Hear my voice. He said, my king. 
kind of like the leper boys who was going through that process when Jesus passed through the upper coast. They said, son of David. Jesus said, okay, they said the right thing. I ain't got to go touch none of them. I'm just going to release them and tell them to go show themselves to the priest. And they heal and going to take forth. Sometimes God just has to speak a word. The Bible says he exhort my word above my name. Sometimes he just speak a word in the, in the area of the centurion soldier. He just sent the word. Y'all understand what I'm saying here? That's the power of God's relationship with you when you begin to walk upright and believe and declare and decree that nothing he would hold from you. David says here, hearken unto my voice of my cry, my king and my God, for unto you I pray, my voice shall you hear in the morning, O Lord, in the morning will I, look, will I direct my prayers. Look, at I will direct my prayers unto you and I will look up. I'm praying all the time. Our model prayer we get all the time. Our Father who art in heaven, how that be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts that we forget our debtors. Lead us not in no temptation, but deliver us from all manners of evil. For thou is the power, the kingdom, and the glory. That's the prayer we do. We, when we, that's getting in the presence of God. When you get in the presence of God, sometimes you got to meditate on the Holy Ghost. Sometimes you got to use your Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, most grateful Father. Oh, most holy one of most high. You ain't got to scream like something going crazy with you. God hear you. Sometimes when God sees something going in your life and he know he can get to you, sometimes you do, the, the, your situation can be so bad, sometimes you got to call on God like you got a hearing aid. And he will heal you. And God hears your prayers. You ain't got to get all wild and boasters and jump all over the place. You don't have to do that. God can hear your prayers. The enthusiasm and the excitement that you put into certain things, it, it ain't no better than me just saying, Lord, I, I really want you to help me. I, I'm, I'm really got some things I really have to take care of. I know you're the most high God. I know you got the plan to supersede for all plans. And the Father God, if this be your will, and I know it will, Father, I declare that you give me the instructions in the way that I need to go. Give me the very information that I may inform here on earth that be your conduit to bring forth that which you have given me to come from the kingdom of God. Oh, great God of heaven. Oh, magnificent Father. Give him all the praise and honor that his glory is due to him when you come into his presence. Always remember that, man and woman of God, when you pray. It's not just a little snatch me prayer and get up and run out the place. It's not just I'm going to pray for you. When you say you're going to pray for somebody, pray for them. Don't say I'm praying for you and then don't pray. Pray for them. Speaking about prayer over here at HNLC Studios, you're always asking you guys, and we don't beg you, we just make it available to you. The video call into our actual prayer line, uh, it's available. You can either text in or you can call in. If you're going to text your prayer in, you can text it to this particular number, 214-897-9554. Or you can call in to actually uh, 972 517 Five, yeah, 1752, 972, 517, 1752. Or you can actually text it in, Harvest New Life, or email it, I'm sorry, harvestnlc at gmail.com. Now, either that phone or the line will ring right there, or one of those lines will ring. If, it, if I'm out of the office, it'll send me a message to my phone. If you go to harvestnewlifechurch.com, Go to harvestnewlifechurch.com. Go to my actual prayer request. You know, if you want to send donations, you can do that too. We love to have your donations to help this ministry continue to keep going forward. This, this, let me say once again, for I don't want to get anybody to get this twisted. For somebody who may have said, "Well, that, that it, it ain't a, I don't have I don't deal in boxes. I mean, that's somebody else's anointing. I, I don't deal in buildings. I'm an international apostle." I go out and I build administrations. I put together programs. I set foundations that come into conformity with the kingdom of God. When you come to my house, you come to visit me, you come to visit me right here in these airways. I walk the airways. I speak through the airways. The churches I deal with, uh, Al Fornes, Al Nirvana, California, uh, Apostle Von Peaks, Good News International, Bishop Raymond Johnson, um, Disciples Tabernacle Church. These are all my affiliated churches I hang out with. All these churches I hang out with that I know. And it's, it's more than that. But when you come on here 
and you get information <clears throat> from somebody who don't know what they're talking about. This is an international studio, Harvest New Life Church Studios. So anybody come and say, well, he don't have this here. No, it's right here and you're seeing it. This is what we do. We're international broadcasting radio service for the entire world, for those who have an ear to hear. So for those who want to email or text your, um, uh, your um, the messages in or your prayer request in, harvestnlc at gmail.com, okay? If you want to call it in, or that's if you email it in under harvestnlc at gmail.com. Go to my website. If you want to actually send it across the line or send a donation, you can do that also. Go to harvestnewlifechurch.com. You have all the information about us there. If you want to text your information in, I know the guys are text savvy. Most of the young people are text savvy. If you want to text your message in, 214-897-9554. That'll text you in. I'm Apostle Ellis here at 18OC Studios here in the city of Plano, Texas. Always a blessing to be with you guys. I get ready to go into, uh, do off the air on my actual speaker show. I want to make sure we get that particular um, radio going. That kind of, the music that kind of pulls us off as we continue to go. But we thank God for joining here at 18OC Studios. As I say, it's always a blessing for you to be with me. Hey, look, you know, do something fantastic today. I mean, I am. It's Mother's Day coming up. Blessing to all the mothers, nay sweet selves. I thank God for my mother also, who's going on to be with the kingdom of God, you know, but she's still my mother. So I have other great mothers down here on earth that I celebrate with them also. So it's a blessing to each and every one of you and all you mothers. I love my love to each and every one, all the mothers out there, both young and old. And hey, have a fantastic Mother's Day. Don't let those guys get off the chain without taking care of you. Amen. Y'all be blessed. Take care.